Today, when we analyze the history of certain individuals, when we look at their biographies, when we admire their achievements and how they have impacted certain human beings, how they have been the role models for certain individuals, we come to the conclusion that the real crux of the matter is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would elevate the status of certain individuals in the eyes of people if during their lifetime they dedicated themselves to his cause and they were individuals keen to purify themselves and seek proximity to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. So the hadith famously says, whomsoever submits to Allah, man akhlasa lillahi rafa'ahu Allah. Whomsoever does everything for Allah, Allah elevates his status. Now, question arises here. What was the most, uh, the powerful tenets and the qualities in the illustrious life of the honorable lady Khadija al-Kubra, peace and blessings be upon her, that made her stand out, that made the Prophet of Islam weep every time she's mentioned. This honorable lady, after she married the Holy Prophet, some ladies of Quraysh, they came and began to gossip. They said that Muhammad married Khadija because of her wealth and he's going to take her wealth by force. She came out in Mecca next to the Holy Kaaba. She had someone with her who would make this announcement. He made this announcement. He said, Ya Ma'ashara Quraysh, on behalf of Sayyida Khadija, ta'ala alayha, Ya Ma'ashara Quraysh, O people of Quraysh, this is the announcement that you must hear. Every wealth that I have, every camel that I have, every possession that I have, I am willingly and happily and totally my decision giving it to my husband Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is not easy when it comes to this particular area. Why? Because many of us uh, say I have worked very hard to accumulate my wealth. I don't want to give it away very easily, yes? That is why most people ask this fake question. They say, you know, when it comes to my wasiyah, I am able to leave a third of my wealth only towards uh, any project or anything that I desire. And two thirds of my wealth uh, has to go to the inheritance, yes? Those who inherit uh, my wealth. The people ask, but you know, uh, can we give more than a third? Well, you can in dunya. You are free to give all your wealth away whilst you're alive, yes, before you leave this world. But most of us still feel that sense of, no, I want to keep it just in case. And that scaremongering and that fear that exists in our hearts is shaitanic, yes. Shaitan desires us to hold on to the wealth that we have and not to spend it in the right way and not necessarily to give it away in fear of being in poverty or fear of needing it somehow in certain places. Therefore, what we find is that Khadija, one of her important qualities that made her an individual who attained the spirituality is that the bro she broke these shackles and these chains associated with materialism and wealth yes this is of the greatest of importance why because today we have narration after narration that comes forward and says to us from the Ahl al-Bayt that the closest position the human being has or can attain with Allah is when they serve others and improve the lives of others and respond to the need of others. There are books, uh, there are chapters in our hadith books which are entitled Bab Qadā'u Hajat al-Mu'min. Yes, the chapter related to the merits of fulfilling the need of other believing brothers and sisters. Yes, as well as helping people of a community and society by and large. What does that actually entail? That entails one to break that association and that desire and that deep love that the Quran says we have with our wealth and to sacrifice it for the sake of Allah. It's a painful process, but a process that makes us travel far as far as and, and indeed quick towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as far as spirituality is concerned. That's why the Quran says, لَن تَنَالُوا الْبِرَّ حَتَّى تُنْفِقُوا مِمَّا تُحِبُّونَ If you want virtue, if you want righteousness, you will never reach it until you give from that which you desire the most. Which, that which you hold on to most and you do not wish to, what? Give away. Hey, when it comes to this notion, we have to be inspired from the personality of Sayyida Khadija. Why? Because this honorable lady could have said, by the way, I'll give you half of my wealth. I'll give you some of my wealth. Yes. Why did she give every single dirham that she had for the sake of Allah? Because she was a visionary. Yes. 
she recognized that by doing this, she will remain what an individual, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will praise in the Quran and mankind will come for thousands of years and will remember her. We find there is a need to look at the spirituality of Sayyida Khadija. How did she come about when it comes to this particular status and these virtues? The first thing that we must understand in this particular regard, see King inspiration from the life of this honorable lady is that she dissociated herself from the chains and the slavery of wealth please understand this point khadija salamullahi alayha was amongst the most affluent and wealthy women in arabia no doubt yes that she was known to be an individual who was what a truly successful businesswoman yes Yet, when it came to the religion of Islam, when it came to sacrifice, when it came to disassociating herself from her wealth, she not only did it where people would say that she gave a bit, she gave everything she had for the sake of Allah to the extent that when she was about to leave this world, she had no kafan to cover her body. Such was the what devotion that she had to Allah. Now, why is this important on the journey to spirituality? Why is this crucial? Because the Quran comes forward and says, You and I love wealth. It's intrinsic. It is part and parcel of our innate nature that we desire to accumulate and to possess. Yes. When you come to hadith, for example, we are told from one of the imma that when the first coin was struck, first coin was used in the history of mankind, Iblis picked it up, kissed it, placed it on his forehead and said, I love you because through you I will be worshipped. Yes. Now, the religion of Islam comes forward and says it is not one that espouses and teaches us to abandon the search to accumulate wealth or to be wealthy. The message of Islam is very clear. You and I must possess the wealth. We must not be possessed by the wealth. That is a big, big difference. A huge distinction that the religion of Islam comes forward and develops. In which way? In the idea that you and I needed to survive. The idea that you and I require it to live a dignified life that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to. But the problem occurs when we consider it our objective in life and it becomes our number one goal and that is to accumulate and to have as much wealth as possible. And by the way, the more we own, the more greedy we become and the more we'd like to own more. Yes, it is like what salt uh, sea water that we drink. Yes, we become even more and more thirsty. What were the great achievements of Sayyida Khadija and others with regards to this wealth is they recognized a very delicate uh, formula that exists after contemplating from the Holy Quran and this requires your attention. Therefore, you would be able to conclude how this honorable lady became so successful. We are told that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us with the power known as al quwwatul fitriya the innate nature which he has created us with which points towards god yes no doubt yes that's the first yet he has also given us this is the power of desire yes shahwa and you and i require shahwa to reproduce to survive the fight or flight response in other words when we are in fear to protect ourselves so shahwa in essence desire is not a bad thing and we must not present it as a bad thing allah has placed it in our existence because we need it however where does the problem lie the problem lies in that we choose to be shahwa driven not fitra driven there is a very important difference. And those who are successful in the eyes of Allah are fitra driven, not shahwa driven. What does this mean? That means in their lives, everything is dictated by the innate nature, by the fitra, by the call towards tawheed and monotheism, by the urge to follow and to obey the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as set down by the Holy Prophet, as opposed to 
the notion that we follow our desire and eat and do whatever our desire tells us. Therefore, we become shahwa driven. And the more shahwa driven, desire driven we become, the more overpowering it becomes over the fitrah, the more that weakening of the heart and its connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we can begin to feel or perhaps we can begin to ignore in our lives. We are told in a very nice statement, we are told that when you give for the sake of Allah, you may be sorting out the dunya of someone, but they are sorting out your akhirah. They are sorting out your akhirah. It's tawfiq. Allah Taala blessed Khadija with wealth, but she never abused it. She recognized that it was entrusted to her by the Almighty Subhanahu Wa Taala. Therefore, she placed it in its right position. Yes, she invested it for her akhirah. She gave every single uh, a gold coin and silver coin for the spreading of the teaching of the religion of Islam. And in addition to this. Her qualities of spirituality were enhanced by her patience, yes, that she was attacked, she was ridiculed, she defended the Holy Prophet during this process of at least 10 or 11 years until she left this world after the Prophet of Islam received the first revelation. Number two. Number three, she was an individual who was a supportive, loyal wife, yes. She did not turn away from the Holy Prophet of Islam when she, he came back from the receiving of the revelation, right. And at the same time, she would stand with courage. It would be only her. Yes, Amir al-Mu'mineen and the Prophet and later joined by Zayd ibn Haritha who would perform Salah in Masjid al-Haram and people would come and pelt them. People would throw uh, excrements upon, uh, on them. But she would not be dismayed. Yes, her stance, her bravery is one that made Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praise her. In which way we are told that the Prophet of Islam was visited by Jibra'il who told him Allah sends his Salam upon Khadija. Khadija is told, Allah sends his salam. Look at her response. She says, Allah is salam. He is salam. And salam goes back to him and salam comes from him. Yes. Means peace, tranquility. Yes. That is uh, the position and the maqam of this honorable lady. Yes. That the Ahlul Bayt would mention and would shower praise upon throughout the centuries in order for people to keep remembering her and for her to be a shining example on the role model for both men and women.